Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm Ron McKenzie Lafergie. In 1969, the United States impressed the world by being the first country to walk on the moon. In the years following, there were several other successful missions to our closest celestial neighbor. But since the final Apollo mission in 1972, the moon has been rather lonesome. Why have we abandoned lunar missions? Today we'll delve into the world of space exploration to try to figure out why it is that we never call the moon back after our brief fling. Today we'll be answering the question, why haven't we gone back to the moon? The first the first thing to say on this subject is, well, we have. At least the human race has. While it's true that lunar landing slowed considerably after the initial rush in the late 60s and early 70s, there have been several hard landings on the moon since the Soviet Union's Luna 24 in 1976. Not only that, but there was even a soft landing on the moon done by China's Chang'e 3, when they landed a lunar rover on the surface of the moon without significant damage. However, the fact remains that there have been no manned landings on the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972. So why have countries around the world stopped sending people to the moon? And more specifically, why isn't NASA doing anything about it? Unfortunately, as with most things, it all boils down to money. In the years leading up to the first moon landing, the US government had ramped up funding for the space program. At its peak in 1966, NASA had a budget of just under $6 billion, the equivalent of about $43.5 billion today. This made up roughly 4.4% of the federal budget. How does that compare to today? Well, in 2015, NASA had a budget of roughly $18 billion making up less than 0.5% of the national budget. Compared to the $600 billion spent on the military in 2015, $18 billion is pocket change. While it's understandable that national defense would take priority, the vast difference in funding goes a long way to explain the slow rate of progress when it comes to space travel. Why this drop in funding from 1966 to 2015? Well, it should be pointed out that the peak of funding in 1966 was certainly an outlier. No one expected the United States to continue committing such significant funds once the space race had concluded. However, few people, particularly those working with NASA, expected funding to dry up quite so much. What could have caused this? Well, you know what they say, when you point a finger, there are four more pointing back at you. While it's easy to attack the government for refusing to fund the space program, much of that decision is based on the public's perception of it. And unfortunately, while Americans do claim to be interested in space exploration, they just don't want to pay for it. A number of surveys have found that Americans still have favorable opinions of NASA and continue to have positive expectations for the space program. One Pew research survey in 2014 found that 33% of Americans believe that humans would have long-term space colonies by 2064, showing an incredible level of optimism. However, according to the American National Opinion Research Center's General Social Survey, when asked about US spending on NASA, only 21% of those surveyed believe that NASA receives too little money. And this isn't just a modern phenomenon. At no point in the last 45 years have more than 22% of those surveyed stated that the US spends too little on space exploration. So American are rather hopeful about space exploration as long as they don't have to pay for it. And with such limited funds, it's unlikely that NASA will spend precious money on a mission that's already been done. This is true of the public as well. There's a distinct been there, done that sentiment amongst the American population. And in all honesty, that is rather fair. With only so many things NASA can do in a year, it makes sense to set their sights on new things like visiting other planets and improving the space station. This is one of the largest contributors to why we don't return to the moon. There are just too many other things to do right now. One final factor that, while a rather vocal minority, does have some effect is conspiracy theorists. There are a number of people who believe that we never went to the moon in the first place. Some conspiracy theorists believe the moon landing to have been a hoax. There are a number of proofs to counter this, not the least of which being the fact that not even America's rivals claimed it was a hoax. But as ridiculous as these people may seem, beliefs continue to negatively affect the public's perception on the space program. An even smaller segment of them believes that we found aliens on the moon and that is actually the reason we have have returned. But that's just crazy, right? Nah, it's crazy. So now we return to our question. Why haven't we gone back to the moon? Well, the short answer is because we already did. But there has been a significant downturn on lunar missions and space exploration in general. This is largely due to a few factors such as a lack of funding and a lack of interest in the moon. And of course, aliens. It's always aliens. While it may be true that a lack of moon landings is not in itself a disconcerting fact, it is rather telling of the increasing disinclination towards funding space exploration. If you humanity keeps along its current trajectory, the Earth may not be livable for much longer. If we hope to find alternatives in space, we may need to rethink our views on the space program. Plus, hey, maybe check in on the moon from time to time. It's lonesome up there. Thank you for watching Life's Biggest Questions. I hope this video has answered some questions you may have and perhaps inspired you to further explore the subject yourself. If you
you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really helps out a lot. And hey, while you're down there, let us know what you think of NASA. Do you think the space program needs more money? What would you like to see out of NASA in the future? We look forward to hearing your opinions. Until next time, I'm Ron McKenzie Lafergie with Life's Biggest Questions, wishing you the best of luck on your quest for answers.